Hey everybody. Today we're getting started with continuous random variables, looking at ones with uniform distributions. First of all, let's remember what a continuous random variable is. It's one that can take its value in an entire range of possible values, not just some discrete set. For instance, if we select somebody at random and then measure their exact height. One problem here is that there are infinitely many possible values for a random variable like this, and so the probability of getting any particular value is going to be infinitesimal, approximately zero. So it doesn't really do us any good to talk about probabilities of particular values. We get around that by only talking about probabilities that the random variable shows up in specific ranges of values. For instance, when we're selecting that person at random, Instead of asking the probability that they are exactly 58.6 inches tall, a probability that's going to be zero, we instead ask something like, what's the probability that they are between 55 and 65 inches tall, a probability that's probably not going to be zero. One more example. Instead of asking what's the probability that a random song on the radio is exactly three minutes long, it's more helpful to say things like, what's the probability that a randomly selected song is less than three minutes or more than three minutes. The simplest sort of continuous random variable is a uniform one. Um, for a random variable like that, probabilities are equally distributed throughout the domain of the random variable. One example that you might have seen is in Excel, the rand function. If you type in R-A-N-D parenthesis parenthesis, Excel is going to give you a random number between 0 and 1 um, with as many decimal places of accuracy as you specify. No values are any more likely than any other values. So if we call the outcome x, we have what we call a uniformly distributed random variable on the interval 0, 1. We compute probabilities in, I think, the most obvious way. For example, the probability that the outcome there is going to be less than 0.2 is going to be 0.2. It's going to be the width of the interval, um, x less than 0.2, divided by the total width of the whole interval, so 0.2 over 1. The probability that x is greater than or equal to 4 is going to be 0.6. Again, the interval that we're interested in is 0.6 units long. The total width of the interval is 1. And the probability that x is between 0.25 and 0.35 is 0.1. In each case, we just took the width of the interval that we're, um, that we're interested in divided by the total width of the range. One little comment here, it doesn't matter whether these inequalities are strict or not. In other words, it doesn't matter that we wrote x less than 0.2 instead of x less than or equal to 0.2. Because when we're talking about continuous random variables, probabilities of individual outcomes are infinitesimal. They're basically zero. We can talk about uniform probability, uniformly distributed probabilities on other intervals. For instance, u of 1 comma 7 is going to be a continuous probability distribution where x can be anywhere from 1 to 7 with equal probability. So let's do an example or two from this distribution. The probability that x is less than 5 is going to be the size of the set x less than 5, the size of the set I've specified, divided by the total width of the interval from 1 to 7. So overall, I'm getting 4 divided by 6, or 2 thirds. This is reflecting the fact that the set x less than 5 covers 2 thirds of that interval. A couple more examples. The probability that x is less than or equal to 1.5 is going to be 0.5 over 6. The denominator stayed the same. The total width of the interval is 6 from 1 to 7. The numerator is the width of the set from 1 to 1.5. Overall, I get a 12. The probability that x is greater than 6.12 is going to be 11 75ths. I did the width of the interval from 6.12 to 7, divided by the total width of the interval, and then simplified a little bit. The probability that x is between 3.2 and 3.8 is 0.6 over 6, or 1 tenth. So we can't just draw probability histograms for continuous random variables any better than we could compute individual probabilities. So our work around here is to draw what we call a density plot and to represent probability not just as height of bars but rather of, as area. Let's stick with the uniform distribution from 1 to 7. Here's the representation of that density plot. 
the total probability should be one. So if we're representing probabilities as areas, the total area underneath any sort of density plot should be one. In a uniform distribution, all probabilities are gonna be equal all the way across the interval, so we expect to have a horizontal line. If the total probability is one and we have a width of six, then the height of the rectangle has to be one sixth. Let's do a couple probabilities just using areas. For example, if we want to get the probability that x is between 2 and 5, we're looking for the area of this shaded region. We do width times height. The width is going to be 3. The height is going to be 1 sixth. So we do 3 times 1 sixth. Simplify a little bit and we get 1 half. That's reflecting the fact that this shaded region is 1 half of the area of that whole rectangle. Let's do one complete example. Graph the density curve for the uniform distribution u of negative 5 comma 5 and then use it to compute the probability that x is greater than 3.5 in that distribution. So the width of the domain here is 10 from negative 5 to 5 so the equation of the density curve has to be y equals 1 over 10. There it is. The width is 10, the height must be a tenth if we're going to have an area of 1. A bit more generally, if we're talking about a uniform distribution on AB, then the height of the rectangle is going to have to be 1 over B minus A, 1 over the width of that rectangle. That way when I multiply width by height, I get 1. Now let's actually compute the probability that x is greater than 3.5 in this distribution. Let's redraw that uh, density curve that we had, and now shade in the region corresponding to x greater than 3.5. There it is. The probability that x is greater than 3.5 is going to be the area of that rectangle, base times height. The height is 1 tenth, one -tenth and the width is going to be 5 minus 3.5. Overall, 1.5 over 10, or 15%.